present day, it isn't uncommon to hear about third, fourth, or even fifth generation ranchers. On this episode of Homegrown, we start season two on the Shaw family ranch. Let's, let's just dig into it. So we're here at the Shaw Ranch with Les Shaw. Um, you know, let me, just tell me a little bit about how your family uh, came to be right here and just next to White Owl, South Dakota. Well, my great grandpa James came from Ireland with his son, his oldest son, Tom. And uh, he came in the late 1800s and he ended up in Wabe around 1897, 96. And he made his way this way after he met his wife, Isabel. They came over just north of the place here, about three miles, and they homesteaded. Right. They, they made a log cabin and they lived up there a while. They started renting this place here at White Owl about 1900. And in 1903, they bought it. And about 1905, they moved down here finally and they lived in a canvas tent for a year or so. And then wow. they built a house. And then my, my grandpa, Les, came along in 1900. Uh, and then my dad came along and my dad and mom, Jim and Kathy. Uh, my grandpa and grandma were Les and Agnes. So, and there's Jim and I are the fourth generation here on this place. And we each have families. Jimmy's married to Jody and <clears throat> they have four kids. And Ann and I have two kids. Uh, that's kind of a abbreviated version. So I just can't imagine that coming over here in the 1800s and build a little log cabin, living in a tent. I mean, it's hard living here right now with modern day conveniences for, a, for an entire year. Can you imagine that living in a it w how tough them guys were. It was a tough country. I, I can't imagine it. Um, my grandpa would tell some stories uh, of when he was a kid, my great grandpa James learned to talk Lakota Sioux and he traded with the Indians here. I was friendly with them and and uh, they they just were nomadic. They yeah. cruised through and everything was against you in those days. Weather, <laughs> yeah. uh, you didn't have equipment like you do now. Uh, and if you didn't make it, there were no social <laughs> programs to save you. you, you, you yeah. The ending wasn't going to be good if you if you didn't put enough food on the table or or put up enough feed for your cattle. Yeah, this year with with the drought conditions and the grasshoppers, the grass, the lush green grass, the downy stuff down in there is isn't there this year, and so it it's really affected these steer calves. They're probably going to be at least 50 pounds light, I would say, this fall. Um, it's uh, not a good thing. It's not fun. It keeps you up at night. As a kid, I, my dad was always involved in the fire department, was on the board and stuff, and, and they always did such a good job. I never thought fire could get out of hand. And then in 03, we had a bad one, White Owl. It was 03, right, Jim? And that was a huge fire. And then another time, uh, we, we lost a man, and I, that was, that shook everybody pretty hard. I, I never knew with all the sprayers and all the equipment, road blades and discs and stuff that you could. That you it could get that dangerous that quick. I never yeah. thought we couldn't put one out. Right. You find out that you can't. Yeah. Well, I, and I was the same way growing up. You know, we would burn the ditches or whatever, or garden after the season and all that. And it was always, I always, you know, like a lot of kids, you like playing with it and making, you know, yeah. or a campfire and, well, and sometimes, you know, I, people don't think about the services that grazing does, but that really mitigates your fire hazard. Great point. I mean, and I don't think people realize that enough, whether it be out here on the prairie or up in, you know, an allotment up in the Black Hills, if we have proper grazing, we reduce the fire load, the, the, the old stale stagnant grass, and we keep the grass greener. I mean, it's just a win-win, and, and that grazing is the only thing that can do that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just like mowing your lawn in front of your house. If you never cut it, it's gonna grow up, it's gonna get old and crusty and a lot more fire ready, and it's not gonna be nearly as thick and lush, and grazing comes and does that. And I think that's, yeah. that's a, And don't get me wrong, CRP is a good thing, but you get a fire, and when it hits CRP, you just pull back because there, there's no sense in going in on that because you're you're not going to stop it in that stuff when you've got five years of old growth and and it's waist high in there it's, you can almost see cake. them stop on 
property lines from different management, guys that were grazing, guys that weren't, or and maybe it's not properly or improperly, but they had grazed this one just previously in this pasture they hadn't, and it'll stop. Exactly. Line. Well, we always got along real well. I mean, even as kids, we kind of just did everything together. And I mean, there's been a couple go to the ground deals, but <laughs> always get over it and move on. And our, our families are really tight. I mean, we've gone on vacations together even. And, we have learned that on your days off, maybe it's best just to kind of hang off by yourself a little bit, you know, a little time away is good too, so. But we've always got along really well. Like you said, every, every generation, my, my great grandpa, we were blessed that he, he found this place and I feel very blessed to live here. Like you said, I, I wake up in the morning and I'm proud of it. It's a great way to raise your family and, and be with your kids every day of the week and they get to go to work with you when they're home from school. And it's a great way of life, but it's, a, it's not necessarily a great way to make a living. <laughs>a beautiful family with yes two lovely girls katie who is 22 and she is a fourth year um, nursing student at augustana mm -hmm. and kylie is going to be a sophomore she is 19 and she will be pre-vet at sdsu we're talking a little bit about the the history of just this building um, you said, you know, late 1800s, early 1900s. So how long have you guys had it and what have you all done to make it look like it does today? So 15 years ago, it was my dream to own the store. That kind of progressed into a lot of patience and waiting <laughs> and timing. And I am 100% that God has perfect timing. Sure. And so a year and a half ago, we were able to purchase the store. And from there, we have um, completely cleaned up, painted, renovated, and tried to do it justice sure. to what we felt like it could look like back then right. and be updated to what we needed for now. Right. So. You've met her. She's yep. fearless. She yep. has no fear. Yep. She'll tackle any task and do anything. There's times that... My God, I wish she had some fear in her. <laughs> I wish she going a little yeah. bit, a little bit more prepared. But no, that's that's the way she is, and it's 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 been a well great. Thing. It's just a, such a testament to to that. I mean, how she's come through her accident and and recovered, and is has still just stayed such a busybody, uh, moving forward with her business and helping with, with everything around here. I think it's it's pretty awesome. January second, we opened and enjoying and getting used to all the new down here. April 3rd, I had a horse accident mm -hmm. and broke my pelvis in three places and fractured my back, which completely took me down to a place I've never been before yeah. and not used to at all. Yeah. And so I have never been more thankful to have somebody be able to run my store. Yeah be here every day between Jody and Chastity Jones, who um, is the postmaster. She could help customers and run the store side of it, which I would not have been able to do 
otherwise. So, so when was that accident? April 3rd. And so, I mean, we're just a few months from that. We are. And, you know, walking in here, I would never have guessed that had I not known that earlier. You look great, everything. I mean, how has that affected you? Everything is healing. Of course, not as fast as I want, even though when yeah. I stop and think about it, it hasn't been that long, yeah. but it's been long enough for me. Yeah. And yeah, just pushing my limits and figuring out every day something new I can do yeah. or things I shouldn't do as well. So yeah, yeah. well, it's, it's just uh, great that there's, you know, we, we've seen that time and again with these other little communities of people, when, when in need, people just show up, they step up and they help out. Yes. And, and probably for no actual benefit of their own whatsoever than just to help neighbors. And I think that's just one of the great common things you see in these, in these little towns. I put a lot of work, my brother and my dad, I learned a lot from my grandpa and dad about genetics and my brother and I AI'd for a lot of years and and we put a lot of time, money, and effort into getting the genetics in, in these to where we have them now. And yeah, disposition's just a part of that. And I, I'm pretty proud of them, I am. The life of a ranch wife is not quite as glamorous as some might think. I mean, you expect, uh, uh, there, there's just some, some pretty big expectations on them that they do a lot of behind the scenes work. Invaluable. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So what? What was that like, you know, for a lot of your lifetime doing the behind the scenes work and... I always enjoyed it. I have to admit that. I enjoyed haying, you know, out, out in the hay field. I didn't mind it a bit. I was never much of a horsewoman, so I didn't do that much, but I, I enjoyed the, the, the working with the machinery, helping Jim fence. I was probably more of a gopher than a fencer, but... <laughs> and I did a lot of staples. The, the little things, and I, I loved it. I loved being able, and I was fortunate in that I didn't have to work away from home, other than the first three years when I did teach. And we'd bundle the kids up with us and take them whatever we were doing, unless Grandpa and Grandma Shaw were handy, and then sometimes they did stay with Grandpa and Grandma. But a good share of the time they went along with us. Communication, grit, and sometimes sacrifice often come with the territory out on the ranch. Coming up, Les and I discuss effective fire management practices and also working with them cute, but oftentimes pesky prairie dogs. So, you know, coming from, you know, folks in town that just think prairie dogs are kind of cool and harmless little critters, um, you know, why, why do we need to try to control them? Why do we, and, and how does that help ranchers? they're left unchecked, uh, they, they'll take everything. They, they, they don't distinguish any type of foliage, they eat everything, everything but some of the weeds. Uh, and there, there'll be nothing left for cattle. And when with uh, the high property values and, and purchase price of ground and the taxes you're paying on this ground, and then going out, we, we, we lease other ground as well. And when we're going out and paying lease on ground, and then letting prairie dogs have this for nothing, it doesn't make economic sense. You, you've got you've to manage them. Like you said, you'll never get rid of them, but uh, it, if, you, if you can keep them in check, uh, you can coexist with them a little bit. Go to Pier a lot, you're in Rapid City a lot, you're traveling the country, but that's not easy either. What can you tell us about that? I always kind of wanted to do something like this. I, th I had a, felt a call to do it, you know? I, I think everybody should at one point but 
Yeah, I, I like I, I want to reiterate, I, I think everyone should get involved in cert, at a certain point in life, whether it's whether it's for 10 years or two or one, whatever, just just step up and, and the reward in what you learn is is invaluable. I, you, you, your your expectations won't even put a shadow on what this is. You couldn't touch it. I don't know when it's going to be over when I yeah. decide to not do it anymore. But right now, I, I I enjoy it. I feel like I feel like I'm I'm starting to make a difference in yeah. something areas with, with the groups I'm with, the stock growers. Uh, Love the group, you bet. So we're in the middle of a pretty serious drought. Um, you know, out in the pastures, there's it's it's pretty it's pretty bleak. There's there's not a lot of grass. There's not a lot of hay. I mean, you were telling me just out here how little of hay you guys got this year. I mean, how do you deal with that? I mean, it's, I mean, what's that like? Well, it's a tough one this year for sure. It's probably the toughest I've seen. You know that 03 through. 07, those years were tough and they kind of just kept building and building and it, and it dug into your reserves. Uh, we bought a lot of hay then, but uh, the pastures weren't in as tough a shape as they are now. We're, we're gonna see some light calves. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna see 50 pound lighter steers, I'm sure yeah. this year. It's that the grasshoppers are taking that good downy calf grass. Uh, and then it was kind of a perfect storm. Uh, Jim and I decided to to keep more calves last year. We, we backgrounded yeah. almost everything. And so we burnt through our reserves yeah. more than what we wanted to. And that is putting us behind the eight ball a little this year. And we're, we're having to go back out and buy this hay this year. And it, it's a, it's a dog it's eat tough. dog world out there in this yeah. hay market. And it's tough. I never thought I'd see hay where it's priced right now. Yeah. And, when you see cattails for $85 a ton, I, I, it blows my mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, but I don't know. It's not the first one. I, I try to, I tell myself this, this is my pep session. I tell myself every morning, <laughs> not the first one. It's not going to be the last. Uh, when you make it through. It's yeah. not going to be fun, but you just do. That's, that's what we do. That's what we chose and that's what we do. And yeah. you put your head down you pull your hat on tight and you just hang on. Why don't you talk a little bit? You got, I mean, we're out here in the middle of nowhere, but yet you still have a fire extinguisher. Can we talk yeah. a little bit about fire? I mean, we're, we're pretty sensitive to fire, like we talked earlier in this country. And, and when, you, when you leave the buildings or whatever in an outfit at any time, you, you've got to have some sort of a fire extinguisher, a shovel. Uh, we pack these wet fire extinguishers around in our outfits and on our hand equipment. And, uh, yeah, they're a great, great sense of security, and uh, for for not a lot of money, that's a really good insurance of, oh, from a real big blow-up disaster. And they're fully rechargeable. All you got to do is put air and water in them, so oh. a person's not scared to use them. Oh, so it's not like yeah, one and done. Class. All you do is fill it with water and pump it up with compressed air, and they're ready to go. Yeah, that's kind of so. Say you smell something, you smell some smoke or something on your four wheeler. Just spray Let it, her have it. it off. Yeah. Let her have it and uh, recharge it. That's all there is to it. Excellent. Yeah. My ultimate dream is that this building can become a place where other women can show off the work sure. that they do in the country. So I've been a hairstylist for 27 years. I've owned the boutique for eight. Um, Jody, for instance, has done her artwork. I want this place to bring all those people together sure. and celebrate what other parts of the ranch life that we have. Right. Um, we're working on a lot of South Dakota made items currently. Awesome. So that'll be something that's coming. I think there's a lot of different things evolving from what I have imaged in my head, what, yeah. what I want it to look like and what it's looking like now. We're kind of in the in-between. So um, we have workshop space available up here so we awesome. can do um, different workshops in the winter time, I think. A lot of this has been kind of postponed. I had planned that we would yeah. do a lot of this this summer, but that's not the way it's working right. out. So we're gonna do 
a better plan and have it all worked out so we can start doing that probably this winter. Mom and dad always made us, you know, they would never allow you to bicker and fight. They just, they never would allow it. Yeah. And it was, it just wasn't going to happen. And it, and it kind of carried on. And uh, the one thing I can say that a lot of people always ask us that same question. What do you, how do you get along? And how do you know uh, your role and everything? And and we, we try to sit down almost every morning. And it might be five minutes. It might be an hour and or better, but you you discuss what your plans for the day are, and what your what your attack is, what the concerns you have, uh, the things that you see that really need to be addressed, and, and then you make a battle plan, and you do that together. You don't right. go in with some preconceived notion that okay, well, this is what we're going to do, and then when he says, well, I think we should do this, and you're out in the middle of it, that's conflict, right. and, and it's not going to work. And 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 there's sacrifice too. Sure. sure. Um, we're a family corp and, uh, do you want it to work or do you want it to go apart? Yeah. Um, and, and once in a while you, you got to swallow it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that's just life. Yeah. That's working with anybody, whether it's family or not. Um, I wouldn't trade it anyway. Yeah. You know, he's, he's the best partner I could ask for. He's been great. Hey, Les, anything you want to say about your folks while they're on camera you can embarrass them or you know i, I guess you know i i just say thank you yeah. very much <laughs> thanks for all you've done all the sacrifices and everything thanks oh, they've been good boys too they've been in trouble well maybe a little trouble well expect, expect that <laughs> taylor just as well as any Never planned